Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review. It's Friday and it is the 6th of October. My name is Russell Shaw and I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXCM. I want to draw your attention to my email address, which is rshaw at fxm.com. If you'd like to correspond, that's the address to use. Just going to go ahead and bring up our disclaimers. We'll start off with a high-risk investment warning. I just want to remind everyone that there is a live trade today. The live trade will be for the non-farm payrolls. Everyone is invited. If you'd like to join, I'm just pasting the links in. Just go ahead, click on that link and register, and you're certainly most welcome. Uh, good morning, James, Howard, Kim. P what a pleasure to have you all on the webinar. Thank you, everyone, for signing in this morning. It is most appre appreciated. Good morning, Raj. Let's just bring up the market commentaries disclaimer. I'll keep this on screen for your convenience as well, just for a few moments. Okay, and just finally, our references market scope 2.0 and tradingview.com. We shall start with TradingView as uh, we've been doing for the last uh, few webinars, and we're going to go straight through to that real rate. Okay, straight through to that rate. And the real rate over here. Uh, it's making um, uh, it's making life as a trader complex. I found this week to be exceptionally uh, exceptionally complex. Hey, Corvus, no worries. I uh, I understand. Okay. The fact of the matter is that the real rate, the trend is up. Okay. If we had to put in our uh, peaks and our troughs, we would get an uptrend. If I go through to the weekly, uh, I think it's all fairly easy for us to see that the trend is to the upside. Technical analysis suggests that the trend is uh, your friend. The trend's in force until it's until it's not right. We've got to be careful here with the with the real rates. There's a limit. There's a limit to how high rates can go. I don't know what that limit is, by the way. I've heard, you know, I've heard uh, interviews with real notable personalities of Wall Street suggest seven percent. Gee, I tell you, seven percent to me seems really high. I, I don't think it can go that high. When we say seven percent, I'm talking uh, ten-year yields. What we're not looking at the ten years. We're looking at the a real rate here, which is our ten-year minus the break-even. Um, but if I have to go through just to the ten-year, let's just bring that up. Uh, we have four four point seven four percent. Okay, so I mean another three percent, another two and a half percent there. Gee, I don't I don't know. Uh, well, I like looking at the um, I like looking at the real rates because it really um, how much. Interest is there after inflation. How tight really are we in terms of rates? And that's what you get with the with the real rate. And we, we're over zero. We, we're at 2.43 percent. Now that's quite tight. That's quite tight. So in terms of how much higher can we go? I don't know. I think there's a ceiling somewhere here. Uh, but the fact is, we don't have a, a trend except it's except an uptrend. That makes life tough for us. So what what I'm doing is I'm looking at the RSI, okay, as a clue to well, how much further can we go in the near term? And the near term, I would say, is capped. We've got this. Um, let's get rid of this line of here. Uh, we've discussed this. Uh, we've discussed this at length. But we do have this sort of overboard condition here. Let me just fix up the um, the style here. I want a border 
I'll make it a, uh, let's make it green. Okay. Yeah, so you can see we're overbought. Um, and if you take a look at the candlesticks now, they do seem to have halted. They do seem to have halted going up. There is a big reversal two days ago. There is a, uh, an inside candle yesterday. Uh, there is some heat to start the day today, but we've got the non-farm payrolls up. Non-farm payrolls is going to be very interesting. The forecast is a hundred and seventy odd thousand. I think it's 171,000. Uh, I have heard the whispered number at 190,000. Um, if it comes in sort of under that 170, I think we see the, uh, the real rates uh, really come down. Take a look at the RSI on the weekly chart. Okay, it's overbought. We've got we've got that selling tail in. Take a look at the real rate on the influential monthly chart. Is overbought. Okay, so I think that we are near our highs. If we go through to the IEF, remember the IEF is the um, ETF where we're looking at bond prices. This is what we're looking here at now is the 10-year real rate. The IEF is the 7 to 10-year um, bond prices. And what tends to happen, okay, let's just go IEF. Let's bring that up. And there's just no doubt about it. We've been absolutely hit uh, with an avalanche here. It's a, it's a waterfall effect. You can just see how the bond market is absolutely capitulated. This is the price of bonds. The bonds have just absolutely been hammered. Uh, and we are at some sort of support. Now, what tends to happen, what tends to happen, let's just bring up um, Microsoft Paint. Now, again, this is a theory. Uh, whether it works out this way, I don't know. But we basically... Offer, We've got a value chart on the IEF. The value chart looks like this. So we've got a bond distribution. Okay. We've got bond distribution. Uh, then we've got a uh, absolutely uh, vicious markdown phase okay, of the bond market. As the bond market gets marked down, the bonds themselves, yields have been moving up. So we've got a markdown phase right and then uh the question is well what happens now okay what happens uh does it continue to fall and and it certainly i don't know where the bottom is of this of this bond market but i would suggest that yields look very frothy well if the yields are looking very frothy there's probably some sort of bottom some sort of floor here with bonds um we tend to get some something here called accumulation. Now, accumulation takes time, so we might we might see some sort of churn out in the bond market as um, the uh, bond value investors go and start loading up on ultimately cheap uh, cheap debt, right? But the idea here is um, it doesn't. It's very rare to get a, a V type reversal very rare to get something where we kind of see boom that I mean we saw it in in COVID but I mean COVID is not a not a normal situation uh, generally uh, we see some sort of accumulation and once the accumulation stage is finished uh, we get the, the markup phase so what I'm suggesting we might be we might okay again this is very much conjecture it's hypothesis we might be in a very um, range-bound market and range ranges are terrible for trading because it's much easier to trade trends than it is to trade ranges. Ranges are exceptionally difficult. But if we go back to the to the IEF, okay, we would have distribution over here, distribution there. We would have markdown over here let's change it to a like that and then possibly 
possibly some sort of accumulation here. And accumulation here on the IEF, if we get accumulation on the IEF, uh, then we would get a range on the real yield moving laterally as well. Okay, um, and that's going to be very interesting to see how markets uh, react if we do move into that sort of range bound market. Let's just go through to the US 10 year minus break even. Mm, it doesn't look right. Let me try that again. Yeah, okay. So, <clears throat> so what we would have here, excuse me, I'm just going to go mute for. Sorry, I just needed to clear my throat there. Uh, here, here is your accumulation, so it's the opposite. Here would be your mark phase for real rate, and now we probably could see some sort of distribution. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very unusual to have some sort of V top or V bottom. Um, so we'll just kind of keep an, uh, an eye on that. What has subsequently happened, um, I think that our core has been um, on, on the right side. Yesterday, we saw that there was a movement up in the US dollar and we said, let's just keep an eye on this resistance level. In fact, if I add in the, um, the pivots, let's make these historical pivots. Uh, we said, keep an eye on that central pivot. It came a pullback hit that central pivot and then it actually did move down. Okay, so there's that counter trend rally that we saw, right? Okay, there's a, a uh, high timer. Yeah, there is a live trading. Um, I've put the, I've put the, uh, I put the registration link in the chat. Just let me know if you can. Oh, I'll just send it to you. I'll just send it to you. Okay, there's the link. Okay, there's the link. All right, so you can see one, two, two, three, and there was the next one, two. Now we've got a, let's, this is a very messy chart. Let's just take the pivots. Uh, sorry. Let's just change the pivots. Um, the dollar today is going to be very much dependent on the non-farm payroll. We're going to do a live trade there. The job market is showing signs, it's showing signs of cooling, but then of course you get something like the, um, the jolts data, which kind of threw a spanner in the works there. But the ADP did come down. Let's see if non-farm payrolls come down. If non-farm payrolls come down, then the overbought condition in the real yields makes sense. Then we should see some sort of cooling in the real yields. If we see the cooling in the real yields, then we should see the next one, two, and then two, three. Only if there is a cooling in that non-farm payroll. If there is no cooling in the non-farm payroll, if it's a hot number, I, I don't think it would be a hot number, but you never know, then we'll get it moving in towards that sort of northeast. But um, I think sort of quiet, quiet trade until that non-farm payroll. All eyes are now have turned and are looking at the non-farm payroll. Um, so yesterday, the market action was as anticipated. Today, a little bit more difficult because of the added variable of that non-farm payroll. Let's just take a look, see what the euro did yesterday. So we looked at euro, we looked at pound yesterday. So we're just going to bring up euro. Okay, and again, it seemed to work out. One, two, two, three. Didn't come quite as far down as the support, but it turned and then we had the movement up. Now, assuming, and this is a huge assumption because it might not come to fruition, but if we get a softer non-farm payroll, then, then we get another two, three, and potentially another one, two up. 
Okay, again, high, high risk trade, non-farm payrolls, very, very difficult to trade. We, we got a lot, we've got a lot of trade, okay? If non-farm payrolls, then risk market's going up. Now, I think if non-farm payrolls is up, I think risk markets go down. So, um, the reason being is uh, we, if the, if the uh, NFP is up, that probably lifts real rates. Well, if it lifts interest rates, that's going to act as a headwind on the risk markets. Let's just take a look at NASDAQ. Okay, uh, NASDAQ was a difficult day uh, yesterday. I did saw it kind of come, I saw it coming down, and then we got this sort of sharp movement up uh, around about um, 5 p.m. ZA time, uh, about 4 p.m. UK. Um, what I suspect, if we get NFP, if we get NFP coming down, if we get NFP coming down, I think we get a bounce in the risk markets. If we get a higher NFP, okay, I think we get a headwind and the, the, the NASDAQ feels, why? Why? Because the non-farm payrolls, the job market's exceptionally tight at the moment. What the Fed is looking for is for a loosening in that job market. It wants to see signs that it's loosening up. If we can get compliance in that there is some softness that's starting to manifest, that should take some pressure off of the real rate. However, if we don't get that uh, loosening up, if it remains tight, uh, then the Fed uh, theoretically keeps rates higher for longer. If we get the rates kept higher for longer, that adds all sorts of pressure on the risk markets, supports safe havens. So what's the safe haven of choice at the moment? It's the greenback, it's the US dollar. Let's just take a look at the um, DAX and we'll take a look at gold. And let's take a look at oil. Oil's interesting, okay? So um, let's just go through to DAX. All right, uh, nothing really happening in DAX yesterday. We did we did put the support level in, and we've just we've hugged that support level. We've hugged that support level again. I would say that this is very much a risk on versus a, a risk off type of uh, sentiment trade. Uh, if there are if the non-farm payrolls is up, that turns risk off. If non-farm payrolls is down, that's risk on. Then the support level, I think, holds if the non-farm payrolls are down and we potentially get something like that. But again, it's going to be very much dependent on non-farm payrolls. Uh, okay, let's just take a look at gold. So gold was oversold. It's, look, it's looking quite bearish, but uh, it was in an oversold position. Let's just take a look at that. So you can see that... Um, it's just moved down and if you take a look at the RSR it's still deeply over steeply oversold so I think there's a floor underneath where gold is again what I think doesn't really matter what matters is the non-farm payroll okay um, if it comes out where there is a uh, non-farm payroll I would say sub 170 so what, sub 170 uh, should get a bounce up here in gold okay the very last chart very last chart let's just take a look at oil oil's slightly different i'll just bring up um brent when i say slightly different um the oil price has pulled back let's just take a look at this on the week it's pulled back uh really this is just the last sort of 48 hours this has been a huge pullback um it's still in uptrend uh but that's looking very fragile at the moment here here is the line in the sand if we cross below that the uptrend ends 
so what's happening with oil is what we call demand destruction. The higher the oil price goes, uh, the less it is demanded. Uh, also, le the less other goods are demanded because there's less money going around. Um, so now there is a, um, a conflict between the some supply constraints of OPEC Plus and the demand for oil and oil products uh, because the higher the oil price, uh, well, um, the less affordable it is. And a lot of this uh, pullback that we're seeing here is very much a function of demand destruction. Uh, I did write an article yesterday just to um, the for Brent 8193 for WTR 77 spot 57. Those are kind of the levels that I'm looking at. If those get broken, the uptrend uh, finishes. We're not in downtrend, but the uptrend finishes. And then maybe the uh, demand destruction has brought demand and supply into um, into some sort of equilibrium. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Any other questions? Let me know. We've got that live trade. Just want to remind everyone is, uh, of course, invited. If you'd like to participate, just sign up using the registration link and you are most certainly welcome. All right. Um, let's wrap up here. Thanks very much, guys. I will speak to you later in the day. Cheers.